The timetable for the course is based over five days, but there are splits within the five day period. Day one, for example, would be the theory, which we are going through at the moment. Day two, the first part of the day, would be the delegates delivering the domestics, in other words, their introductions to the micro teach sessions, followed by usually the afternoon micro teach preparation time. Now, there needs to be a split between day two and day three, preferably a weekend, to give the delegates time to put their micro teaching sessions together. So then, perhaps on the Monday and Tuesday, after the weekend, you'd have two complete days of micro-teaching sessions. You need to be careful with the number of candidates that you're actually teaching. For example, I've taught 10, I've taught 12. The best number is probably about 8. That gives you time to do a complete day without running too much over time. So day three, day four micro-teaching sessions. There needs to be a break between day four and day five. Again, possibly a weekend, possibly a week, so that the delegates can put together their portfolio for check-in and completion. Okay, let's start with some session aims and learning outcomes. The aim of this first session is to introduce an icebreaker activity and a discuss. And the learning outcomes, upon completion of the session, learners will be able to state why we use icebreakers and energizers, State the considerations to be aware of when using icebreakers and energizers, and to gain practical experience of using an icebreaker. Now, one thing to remember when you're ever putting together a session plan or lesson plan, and perhaps you split that session plan into several units, each unit or lesson or lecture must have an aim, which we've got here, which is a, a broad brush look of, at what we're going to discuss, what we're going to go through and more importantly the learning outcomes now all courses all sessions are based on the learning outcomes and these are the most important part these are the elements which you want the delegates to remember and to take away with them from the course if it was an exam course for example the learning outcomes would be the types of questions that would be asked in the exam itself Class question, that's what CQ stands on the left hand side, icebreakers. An icebreaker is a short task or activity used to actively promote inclusion for all. It is often a good idea to incorporate an icebreaker at the beginning of the session. But what are they designed to do? Well, what do you think? They create a positive group atmosphere. They break down social barriers. They allow learners an insight into each other. They ease learners into the course or session frame of mind and they allow the teacher an insight into the direction that the course or session may take. Practical Icebreaker Carry up research and identify two icebreakers you would use and describe how they are inclusive and motivate the learners. Now there is a book available from Highfield Publications that accompanies this course and there are details of icebreakers and energizers within the book. Activity, deliver your own icebreaker session. Now what I've asked my delegates to do in their training courses is to deliver the icebreaking session during their micro-teach sessions. So they'll obviously, with each micro-teach session, they'll start with the domestics. They will then deliver an icebreak session before they start the main micro teach session. Now energizers, these are similar to icebreakers although used in a slightly different context. An energizer is used as its name suggests to energize and motivate learners. Their short activities are tasks that cater for maximum inclusion and mostly employed after a lunchtime break or the graveyard shift or any period where the learners appear demotivated and they must be relevant to the subject being delivered. Now GE is something which I would teach the delegates, it's, it is a group exercise. So you'd split them into groups and there's many ways you can split classes into groups. You can go around the room giving each person an individual number. For example, if you wanted to split nine people up into three groups of three, 
Uh, for each person, you would go as you go around the room. Say, for example, you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you'd say all the ones sit together, all the two sit together, all the three sit together, and you can split people into groups in various ways. You can use playing cards. You can go with the colour of their hair. You can use their astrological signs. You can use the colour of their shirts, their shoes. It's totally up to you. But can you think of some negative considerations with regards to icebreakers and energizers? Well, first of all, it may be the first time that the learner has ever spoken in front of a group. The learner may be of a timid disposition. The learner may have had a previous bad learning experience. Or the learner may get easily embarrassed. And this could lead to things like demotivation of the learner. Or them not wishing to continue with a course or session. To summarise, as teachers we must be aware of the 2007 regulations and their impact. Teachers are now expected to support the learner, directly or indirectly, in all aspects of the learning journey. And icebreakers and energizers are useful tools if used in the right context. Let's have a little bit of a revision. What does IFL stand for? Does it stand for Institute for Learners? Institute for Learning, Institution for Learners, or I'm for Learning. So what do you think? And the answer is B. Let's have another one. What is an energizer used for? Is it to energize and motivate, to confirm learning, to assess knowledge, or to motivate? It is to energize and motivate.